What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to continue with our team preview um, prediction series. This is the 10th team we're doing, the second team out of the ACC, and it is the North Carolina Tar Heels. If you guys enjoy, please leave a like. It helps the video get out uh, to as many people as possible. You can also hit that subscribe button if you'd like to down below. Ring the bell as well if you'd like, because uh, I'm uploading a lot of content. So if you want to know when I upload, hey, ring the bell. You can also leave a comment down below. You can tell me your thoughts on this video, what you think North Carolina is going to do in 2021. You can also give me some video ideas, other teams you'd like to look at down there as well. Very open to suggestions. And without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about North Carolina in 2021. To me, this always feels like a team, uh, at least over the past couple of years, that has been close. Um, 2019 wasn't the best year. They lost a lot of close games. And last year in 2020, they really came out as quite a good team, but they still lost some games that they shouldn't. Uh, Florida State. They were a drop pass away from possibly winning or tying, um, but more than likely winning that game. Uh, Virginia, that was another uh, inexplicable loss. Um, just, just some of the losses that this team has, just not, not good losses. Um, and they need to be able to fix that this year if they want to contend in the ACC, because it's going to be dominated by Clemson. Clemson's going to be the favorites, but there are a lot of teams this year in the ACC, North Carolina being one of them that might be able to compete with the Clemson Tigers. Will they? Well, you'll have to find out here uh, in a little bit. They avoid Clemson on the regular season schedule. I'll show you the rest of the schedule here in a little bit. Uh, but North Carolina is losing quite a bit of talent. Um, the running back duo and Javante Williams and Michael Carter, uh, both of those are gone. Both of those guys were fantastic. I believe both of them had over 1,000 yards rushing in 2019. Um, and again, they shared the load yet again in 2020. I believe both of them even had over 700 yards. Um, they were dual threat dominance on uh, the offensive side. They could run, they could catch, they can do anything you need. Um, but talking about pass catchers, they're losing a lot of those as well. Deami Brown and Daz Newsom are the two guys that really stand out. Those are the top two pass catchers, but also Rontavius Groves, who had a pretty solid season in 2019, didn't play in 2020. Um, I don't believe, but again, losing those, the, 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 this is going to be, those are huge losses uh, for North Carolina. Um, being able to replace that, not going to be easy. Um, but we'll look at some guys that I think might be able to um, maybe step up here uh, in a little bit. And on the defensive side of the ball, they're losing a lot more than I thought. Uh, originally, Zach Gill has gone off that defensive line, uh, who was pretty solid on that line. Chas Surratt, who's been their best defender for the past two years, led the team in tackles. In 2019-2020, he has gone to the NFL. Uh, Kadri Jackson also gone off the or off the linebacking core. And in the defensive backs, you have Patrice Rene and DJ Ford. Um, and DJ Ford is a big loss for North Carolina. Uh, I believe had over 50 tackles in 2019, uh, but did not play in 2020. But of course, as the saying goes, it's not about what you lost. It is about what you have. And you might be thinking, how is North Carolina still going to be solid? Uh, two words, Sam Howell. Uh, the Heisman contending quarterback um, is going to be a top five, at least, maybe at least the top 10 NFL draft pick, more than likely a top five. He is an absolutely fantastic quarterback, 3,000 yards his past two seasons. I expect nothing to change this year. Uh, Sam Howe, really good quarterback. He's going to be the leader of this team. Now, losing Javante Williams, Michael Carter, yes, big losses, uh, but they still have some guys. Uh, British Brooks is the name that comes to mind. They also got a big winner in the transfer portal. That's Ty Chandler, a running back from Tennessee. That was kind of considered a 1A, 1B with Eric Gray. Should fit in nicely with North Carolina. They still got some great pieces at wide receiver, such as Coffrey Brown and Bo Corrales. Both those guys are going to be returning, as well as tight end Garrett Walston. So Sam Howe still got a nice group of patch catchers that or pass catchers uh, that he can play around with. Uh, the Fox brothers, Tomari Fox and Tomon Fox on D-line and linebacker, respectively, are both coming back, as well as what I believe is going to be their best defender this year in Jeremiah Gemmel. He is a linebacker. Also, in the defense back groups, you still got a lot of nice talent. Uh, some guys to call out Cameron Kelly, Don Chapman, among others. There's still a lot of nice talent on this North Carolina team. I think they're going to be just fine. Yes, they're losing a lot, but they still have a lot of really nice pieces. Hey, here's a first look at their schedule. They were 8-4 and four in 2020. 7-3 and three in the ACC. Yes, it includes a loss to Notre Dame. They ended up being fourth in the ACC as there were no divisions in that conference last year, but they did lose the Orange, the Orange Bowl to a team we looked at yesterday, 
Texas A&M. Hey, I'm going to talk about some games more than others. We're going to talk about every game on the schedule. If it gets highlighted in green, it's a win. If the date gets highlighted in red, it's a loss. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about North Carolina. I open up with a Friday night road game uh, on the road in Blacksburg. I already said on the road. Uh, in Blacksburg uh, against the Virginia Tech Hokies. And Virginia Tech's always a competitive team. Blacksburg is a hard place to play. But Tech is losing quite a bit of pieces here. Uh, Khalil Herbert gone. I believe Hendon Hooker gone as well. Of course, Caleb Farley is gone. Lots of pieces leaving uh, for Virginia Tech. But they still should be uh, a fairly uh, competitive team. Burmeister probably going to end up being that quarterback. How does he do? I don't know. Um, and I, I mention this every time, or at least right now, uh, that we've seen. Uh, but... A highly ranked team usually does not do well on the road on weekdays because it's a short week of practice and everything. But this is the first game of the season. Talked about a little bit with Ohio State. They have a similar scenario when they go on the road to play Minnesota. North Carolina, going to be a highly ranked team. Got to go on the road to play Virginia Tech. Um, I think this is going to be a dogfight game. I think this is going to be back and forth for uh, a little bit. Uh, but I think North Carolina's got the better pieces. I think Sam Howe going to take care uh, of Virginia Tech's defense in the second half especially with Caleb Farley gone. Uh, but Virginia Tech usually has some great defensive backs, so I see this one being closer than a lot of people think. Uh, but I do have North Carolina getting a good win on the road against what should be a pretty solid Virginia Tech team. Their next game is against the Georgia State Panthers. Uh, this is the team out of the Sun Belt that is pretty decent. Um, they're not horrible, but they're not great either. North Carolina's just got too much talent. I think they should easily be able to take care of Georgia State. Now it's time for revenge. Um, losing to Virginia last year was inexplicable, and it shouldn't have happened. And I think North Carolina gets their revenge this year. I'm not expecting much out of Virginia, although Virginia could be a team to surprise a fair amount of people. But I don't think Virginia is going to be able to compete with Notre Dame. Maybe they hang around for a little bit, but I don't see this one being particularly close. I believe North Carolina is going to be able to get their revenge and get the win. Then technically they have a neutral site game. It's played in Atlanta. I'm going to call it home field advantage for Georgia Tech. You can call it neutral site, whatever you want. Um, I'm going to call it home field advantage for Georgia Tech, but technically it's a neutral site. It's going to be played in Atlanta. Again, I've already said it against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech has a hard schedule. It seems like they're playing a tough game every other week, and they're going to be tired every other week. It's going to be a dogfight of a schedule, but it's not a team that you want to overlook. They have a lot of nice pieces on offense and on defense. Talked about it a little bit. Uh, in my Georgia and Clemson videos. Uh, but Georgia Tech, they're going to be a solid team this year. Georgia Tech might be able to hang around for a quarter or two, uh, but I see North Carolina again being able to pull away. Um, uh, North Carolina again, uh, I, I think especially on the defensive side of the ball, North Carolina's defense is three, four times better than Georgia Tech's. Um, I expect North Carolina to get the win there. Duke might be the worst team in the ACC this year besides Syracuse, but Syracuse maybe might even be better. Um, Duke just, I mean, hey, North Carolina Duke, great game to watch on the hardwood. Don't think it's going to be a great game this year to watch on the turf. I do have North Carolina being able to pretty easily handle the Duke Blue Devils. And North Carolina gets a chance for revenge again. Florida State is their next game up. Now, Florida State's a team that I feel like a lot of people might overlook. They have Mackenzie Milton at quarterback, but that's keeping in mind his health. They still have a lot of nice pieces out there at wide receiver, running backs as well. The defense should be solid for Florida State, uh, but it's about piecing everything together. Mike Norvell had a disappointing season his first year round, and if Florida State can get it together, this can be a solid team. But I think revenge is on the mind of North Carolina here. Um, we've seen it so many times in college football. When you lose to a team that you shouldn't lose to or you lose to a team bad, you want to come out and beat them next year or you want to come out and beat them whenever you get the chance. And for North Carolina, I think this is going to be a perfect opportunity to show the country how good they are. And it's right before a really big game. Now they might be looking ahead and Florida State could jump on the opportunity, um, but I do have North Carolina being able to pull out and win this game. Could be closer than a lot of people think if Florida State and Mackenzie Milton can get it together, but I do have North Carolina winning the football game. And now what could be their toughest game of the season, but these two next games are their most important games of the season. Miami is the next game up, and it is a home game. So North Carolina is going to be playing this game at home. 
this is going to be a tough one. And I think this is a tough one for both sides. Um, and this game very well could decide who plays Clemson in the ACC championship game. Now, both of these teams avoided Clemson uh, in the regular season draw. And you, we know that by my Clemson video. Uh, but this is going to be a fantastic game. Should be a top 10 at least, or should be uh, at least a top 15, top 20 matchup. Possibly could be a top 10. Both of these teams, well, Miami probably won't be undefeated coming in, but both of these teams have the potential to be undefeated. Again, Miami has to play Alabama, so highly unlikely. Um, but this should be a, a very fun game. I think it's going to be a make-or-break game for Miami. I think they're going to be uh, reeling, trying to get in the playoff. They're probably going to have only one loss by this point. And but, but, these two teams are very similar. I like Miami's returning production just a little bit better uh, than North Carolina's but I am going to give North Carolina the edge here in this game. I absolutely think it, it's a toss-up. Flip a coin, pick whoever you want to win this game. But I do think North Carolina is going to have the slight edge. I think they have some of the better pieces defensively um, to be able to sti uh, stifle the Eric King. Um, this is going to be a, a hard-fought game, and I could see this one going either way. Go, or either way. Go ahead and pick Miami if you want. I really couldn't care less. Um, I'm going to pick North Carolina to win this game. I'm going to go with the home team, and uh, North Carolina keeps their undefeated season alive. Then they get their bye week. You have no perfect place. You have no other perfect place for a bye week as it comes right before the game against Notre Dame. This is going to be another hard fought one. And again, revenge could be on the mind. This is one of the losses that North Carolina suffered last year, um, and it was a pretty easy win uh, for Notre Dame. It was competitive for a little bit, but Notre Dame. You, you knew they were going to win uh, the whole way through. Um, and it is a road game for North Carolina. So this could be a little bit of a tricky environment. And, uh, of course, Notre Dame has that stretch of just five absolutely brutal, tough games uh, in a row. They're probably going to be tired by the end of this one. I know it's a home game for the Irish, but I'm going to go ahead and pick the Tar Heels to win this one as well. So they're two most important games of the season they've won, uh, at least in my opinion. Again, you can go and pick Notre Dame here if you would like. You can pick North Carolina to lose both of these games. It doesn't matter to me. I do think North Carolina is going to be able to beat the Notre Dame Fighting Irish uh, on October the 30th. Going to be another hard-fought game. I think they'll pull it out. The game against Wake Forest, I don't see being particularly close. Wake Forest has got some okay pieces, but it's nothing uh, to compare with North Carolina. And they come into <laughs> a pretty interesting game, 9-0. Uh, a road game against Pitt. Now, this is the weekday game, the weekday road game that I've been talking about. Short week of practice, highly ranked team on the road against a solid opponent. You don't want to overlook Pitt this year. I believe they were my number three overall underrated team for this season. Pitt's going to be pretty good. I can feel it. I, I feel like Pitt's going to string together um, a pretty good season. and I think they're going to upset some team down the line. And this is the perfect recipe for an upset. It, it just is. It's not a trap game by any means, but short week of practice, highly ranked team on the road. I have the Pittsburgh Panthers upsetting North Carolina here. I, I think North Carolina's going to drop a game somewhere, whether you want them to lose to Miami or Notre Dame or Pitt or any combination of those. Great, go ahead. I don't care. But for, for the sake of this, this is all the recipe you need for it. It, 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 an upset. It really is. I think Pitt uh, is going to pull off the upset here uh, and beat North Carolina. They should be able to easily handle Wofford. Sorry, Terrier fans. Uh, and then, again, a Friday game on the road against North Carolina State. Could be another tough one. North Carolina's probably still going to be a highly ranked team. Uh, if this scenario were to play out, still in playoff conversation, and uh, I think they get the win here. Um, uh, I think they get the win. I think they have the better pieces, the better talent. Um, just all around, in my opinion, the better team than uh, North Carolina State. While North Carolina State's not going to be a pushover this year either. This one could be closer than a lot of people think. Um, but I think North Carolina and Sam Howell are going to uh, get into that final push towards the championship game. All right. And uh, with that, you see only one game highlighted in red. And that means I have the Tar Heels going 11-1. and one. Now, 11-1. and one, Again, predicting these games is hard because you never know what teams are going to do. You never know how teams are going to look. I've said this many times, but I'm going to say it one final time. If you want to have them losing to Miami, great. 
If you want to have them losing to Notre Dame, great. If you want to have them losing, losing to Pitt, North Carolina State, great. You can go ahead. Um, just for the sake of this, I had them losing to Pitt. Um, again, I picked the record and I picked the games. Um, I just feel like they match up well with Miami, Notre Dame, and that Pitt. It's just a perfect recipe for a uh, disaster. Uh, but 11-1 and one is what I see North Carolina going this year. They absolutely can go 12-0. Uh, and 0. They can beat Miami. They can beat Notre Dame. And they absolutely can beat Pitt. Uh, but 8-4 and four is my worst-case scenario again. Miami, Notre Dame, Pitt, North Carolina State, probably the four more most likely losses there. But if this team, again, just can't seem to win these close games and they struggle um, against teams that they really shouldn't struggle against, it's going to be another disappointing season for Tar Heel fans. I don't think that's going to happen. I think this team is something special. I have the Tar Heels going 11-1, and one, and that's going to do it for my North Carolina preview and predictions for the 2021 season. If you enjoyed, leave a like. You can also subscribe. Ring the bell so you know when I upload. Again, I'm taking the weekend off. Leave a comment down below. You can tell me your thoughts on this video because the next team we're going to be looking at come Monday, it's going to be the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Will the independent get back to the college football playoff? You're going to have to find out on Monday. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all of you guys on Monday. Again, we'll talk about Notre Dame. Goodbye.